Dear Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God, my rock and my salvation. Amen. You just sang my sermon for today, my message for today. Listen, God is calling. How does God call you? How does God call you? He called you this morning to come to church, didn't he? He called you to come and sing his praise and to hear his word. The three lessons that we heard this morning and supposedly the sermon that I'm giving now all are to inspire you to listen to what God has to say, to take it into your heart, and to live it. Jesus, when he was on this earth, gave us an example. He didn't go and just talk to the Pharisees and the people of the church. No, he went out and he preached and talked to the common people, the people like you and I. He came and he talked to them and he told them about God's great love for them. God's great love that gave Jesus to be a sacrifice for your sins and mine and for the sins of the whole world. He came, he suffered, he died, but he rose again to give us the confidence of eternal life with him and to acknowledge the fact that he had conquered death and the devil. And so we can live our lives, as I talk to the children, in confidence that he is by our side no matter what's going on in our lives. And our lives are not perfect by a long ways. And he never promised us that life would be perfect. He just said that he will be at our side to hold us up during the bad times and to move us on to our final goal of being with him eternally in heaven. When you get old like me, you start thinking about that even more. I think about that quite a bit anymore, I'm afraid to say, because I'm looking forward to that day. I am looking forward to that day. I can't wait. But every day, I wonder, okay, I'm here. I woke up this morning. What does God have in store for me today? What does he want me to do? And today, he gave me the opportunity to come and lead you in worship. Other days, I wonder. I sit around home all day and wonder, well, what's going to happen? What's really going to happen today? And a lot of times, nothing happens. Nothing at all. And that's really discouraging because you, you really want to do something. You want to do something. But when you're home and all you have is your wife and yourself, what are you going to do? Pray. That's about the only thing that you could do during the day. You could pray, and you could get into the Word. And this is the thing that we said. Listen, God is calling through His Word inviting. And every day we have an opportunity to open our Bibles and to read God's Word and to study to figure out what is God saying to me today. I have, to myself, made a goal of reading the Bible through from one end to the other this year. I don't know if I'm going to make it or not. I'm in Isaiah, which is about halfway through, so I guess I'm doing all right. Every time you read the Bible, you read something new. Something, you find something new that you had never thought about before or that had never came into your mind before. So those, this is the way God is calling. Every time you open your Bible and you read, every time you go to a Bible class, every time you come to worship, all these ways are 
ways that God is calling you, calling you to listen to his word and telling you what he expects from you. There's not... The thing that, we, that God expects from us, Jesus emphasized once, and he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. That comes to be a, a little question there. How much do you love yourself? Do you really love yourself? Are you happy with you? And I hope all of you can say yes. And the other thing that strikes me all the time is the fact that you come up to someone and they look like they're going to bite your head off. The best thing you could do is smile and say hello to him, no matter if you can't stand a guy. Jesus didn't say you had to like the person. He said you had to love the person. And to love the person, you have to give of yourself that smile and that greeting. These are things that you could do and that Jesus expects of you in your life. Not to go around like old I can't even make a sour face like that, but ask her. I do quite a bit. <laughs> but this is the hardest thing that the hardest thing that we have to do in this life is to share our love, the love of Christ, with those around us. I know of several of you that no matter when I see you, you've got a smile on your face. And there's some of us that, well, forget it. I think we've forgotten how to smile. And there's some of us that are in between. We could smile once in a while, but other times, forget it. I got nothing to smile about. But you do have something to smile about. You have Christ in your heart, you have him at your side, and you know that he is always with you. And that's something to smile about. You have the confidence in God that he will be with you, that he is with you, no matter what you are going through in your life. And our lives are not very predictable. We'll put it that way. The older you get, the more you find out how unpredictable life is. I see a couple of, well, let's see now, looks on their faces. But that's true. We find out that life is not predictable, that we have all these things that happen in our lives that seek to pull us off the track to try and pull us away from Christ. And the thing that gets the most, gets me most, is the fact that I know Christ is by my side and he is going to push me back to the right path. You have to give him a chance. Sometimes we know we're doing something that isn't really right, but everybody else is doing it, so why can't we? The thing is, we know that that is not right in the eyes of God. I can't think of something right now that, for an example, but I know that there are things that we do in our daily lives that are not making God happy. That he's not happy with us when we do them. But we know that he will lead us back to the right path and get us on the road to salvation. Jesus loves me, this I know. The children heard this. And each one of us, I don't know how many of you, but I can remember that that was one of the first songs I ever learned. And I know it was one of the first songs my children learned when they went to Sunday school. 
And I hope that they have never forgotten it. The sad thing about getting older and being apart from the rest of your family is that you don't know what's going on in their lives. They're all over the country. Between us, we have seven kids, but none of them live this close. We had one grandson that came to visit us two weeks ago, and it was wonderful to have him with us for the whole weekend, and he promised that he would do it more often. But this is the way our busy world is. We get caught up with things that are necessary, we think, in our lives. And we forget some of the things that are really important, things that are important to others in our lives. And so, as we go through life, try to remember the things that are important to other people beside ourselves. We have a tendency, and it's only human, to say, me first, and someone else second. But in God's order, it's God first, then the others, and then you. Different than the way we think a great deal of the time. But God should be first in our lives, and then others that are around us, others that are important to us and that we are important to them. They are, should be second in our lives. And then what we want should be third. It's hard to, to do that a lot of the time. But this is what God expects from us. Listen. Listen, God is calling through his word, inviting inviting us to enjoy the life that he has given us. And I say enjoy because that's exactly what he wants for us. He wants us to enjoy our lives. Sometimes it may seem that it's impossible to enjoy what's going on around us, but he wants us to enjoy our lives. And so what we do, we should be doing things that make life more enjoyable. And when we have God in our lives first, life will be enjoyable because we have the confidence that we need to get through all the things that are going on in our lives. The confidence that, as we said, Jesus loves me, God loves me. God loves me all the time even when I turn my back on him. He's there, ready to take me back into his arms. Never forget that, that God loves you first and foremost after the fact that you love him. He loves us. And never forget that, that God's love is with us continually. He loves you. Never forget that. Amen.